Our world is soaring toward 2012. Time is speeding up. Chaos is shifting into a new level, and we feel the pull to unlock the mysteries of the universe. Timeless spiritual wisdom offers the point of stability to navigate these times and to open our greatest potential. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the fun and knowledge of visionary best-selling authors Sri and Kira as they explore these mysteries and invite your higher love to come forward. And now, here are Sri and Kira. Namaste. I am wisdom teacher Sri Ram Ka. And I am Kira Ra. Hi, everybody. We are so glad that you are joining us right here on Higher Love. And you know, I am really diving into tonight's topic, Sri. I love it because let's face it, gossip, Facebook, Twitter. I mean, the bottom line is, what is it we are really connected to? And hey, what's it doing to us? You know, Facebook stock is bouncing like a rubber ball. People are suing each other. Gossip is all over the place. Key players are duking it out. But where is our attention? What are we doing and how does it affect us? Well, attention is really where it's at. What we put our attention on is really is what defines our whole world. Ooh, wait a minute, Sri. I love that. What we put our attention on defines our whole world. But now, just stop and consider for a moment. <laughs> I am. If you're focused on watching clouds in the sky, you become what is called a daydreamer. But, you know, that's okay sometimes. The key is how long can I sustain that? Or if you're focused on tweeting and, and doing little micro slices. You mean uh, little thumb exercises uh, uh, all day that's long? That's <laughs> it. That's it. Then you're focused on this, this very short, brief, interactive stuff. Where we put our attention defines who we are. It defines what we love. Well, it does, Shree. You know, and the key is, what do we love? One of the things, now, you know, Facebook has been out there for, I think, since 2004 is when it was founded. So here we are in 2012. That's eight years. And here's a, a funny statistic, because we're talking about, you know, what are we really connected to? Well, you just brought up a good point. What are, what, where is our attention? You know, a couple months ago, we did a really powerful show about our attention. And one of the things we discussed during that time is that the human attention span at this point has dropped down to a whopping eight to 10 seconds max. Now that is exactly, I mean, I, exactly the same as a goldfish. Yet goldfishes aren't posting their recent activity on, online and, and showing everybody a photo <laughs> of it. And yet, is there this connection between the Twitterverse, the Facebookverse, the LinkedInverse, and the way that we connect? You know, we as human beings are connect to be you human being, human doing. And so it's just really a big issue right now as to what are we connected to and, and how is it affecting us? And so let's pause for a moment because there's more than one question in that question. When we look at what's happening in our society that we, uh, at least in the Western world, are being trained to lose attention, that mm. is to lose interest. That's a powerful insight. You know, and, and, and from the uh, loud blaring uh, radio commercials to the TV commercials to the Twitterverse, we're, we're being trained to think in shorter segments to uh, really become cliches in many well, ways. You know, it's funny because you'll be out somewhere and, and it's kind of, uh, it's amusing and at the same time alarming. And I, and for me it is anyway, to witness, I'll witness a group of young kids sitting together at a table at a coffee shop, none of them speaking, but they're all, pay, they're all texting each other at the table. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's yeah. just hysterical. You see thumbs going like crazy, the occasional sipping on the latte or the coffee or the mochaccino or whatever it is. Nobody's saying anything, but every once in a while they look up and catch each other's eye. Well, the other thing that's very odd to me, and maybe this is because I grew up with a different environment. Could be. Is that uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, text message, instant messenger, all of this theoretically keeps us connected. It keeps us involved in other people's lives, yet... Are we really involved when our involvement is limited to X number of characters? Well, you know, or, you know, there's 144, no voice, there's, it? No, there's <laughs> no hugs, there's no full connection. It's a very linear stream of connection. You know, Sri, it is linear. And I'm sitting here and, I'm, and I'm, I hear you guys. I hear those of you that are going, wait, I love my texting. I love my Facebook. Here's the key, though. The title of this show is Gossip, Facebook, and Twitter. What are you really connected to? Because at the end of the day, Facebook, Twitter, all of these social networks, if you really pay attention to the vast majority, now guys, yes, I'm generalizing, it's really about gossip. 
And gossip is a powerful energy that can shape the context of society. Well, there's you know, there's just a lot of richness here, so let's poke at it a little bit. Oh, okay. For, first off, technology is fun. Uh, having the uh, the ability to send your photos, to send your thoughts, to send uh, your your tweets. Hey, that's all fun stuff. Yeah, that's true. You, and and it's a it's a very cool way to uh, you know like poking an elbow into the ribs of your friend. You know, <laughs> hey, did you know this? Hey. As long as you do it within that nine second <laughs> attention span, because that's all you've got. However, you know, we recently uh, did a show talking a bit about abundance, yes. talking about um, a topic that everyone is concerned about, which is their ability to manifest wealth, their ability to manifest abundance. And I just want to throw this out uh, for you to consider. If we're training our attention spans to become shorter and shorter, yes. how do we accomplish longer term goals? Well, you know, Sri, here's something that's fascinating to me. You know, as you're mentioning that, and let's come to this. In 2009, okay, that is only three short years ago. Do you know what our average attention span was then? It was a bigger goldfish. It was 30 seconds. For 30 That's seconds huge. versus 8 it seconds. It was 30 seconds in three. We've lost how much in just three years? That's alarming. Does that mean in three more years the attention span is non-existent? You know, I, I look at this and go, is this why people are starting to say, put a chip inside of me? You know, look at this whole RFID thing that's coming forward and saying, hey, put a chip inside of me because I don't even want to pay attention to what's happening to my to my digital bank account or to my life. Well, to, I don't want to, but it, uh, is it a lack of attention or an unwillingness to take responsibility for the quality of your life? And is that why the gossip is taking over? What are we connected to? You know, are you really connected to Facebook or are you connected to the thrill of the gossip? You know, for example, right now, you know, the, uh, the news is certainly filled with lots of things, but one of the things I find hysterical is that you have this uh, huge IPO with Facebook. Facebook. All these people are like, I'm going to make a bajillion dollars because I'm connected to the Facebook culture. All these people, a lot of people that have never even done a lot of serious investing, invest in Facebook. It's plummeting, 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 plummeting. You've got this guy, Saverin, who, you know, bless his heart, this guy is a Brazilian who was only ever an American for 10 years, moved to Singapore quite a few years ago and is now the subject of all forms of attack. And, and I'm not going into the legitimacy of any of this. What I'm saying is just look at where the attention goes and how quickly in the past few seconds I was able to offer you guys an incredibly broad spectrum of things to consider. Think about that, Sri, and the amount of seconds that that can come into our consciousness. And so we're having our micro experiences, you know, when you mentioned... But not uh, our microchip, because uh, I no, will not let them put one of those inside of me. <laughs> but the, Another show. <laughs> it, 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 it just shows, uh, you know, this whole thing with the uh, IPO is all about the money. Uh, there's the money and the fabulous sums of money being made by the founders of Facebook. Then there's the, the fabulous greed uh, or being expressed by the Department of Treasury saying, you know, we want our slice of this profit. And then there's, of course, the motive to protect what, what the guy has earned. And, and there's all kinds of themes going on. But let's come back for a moment. What is it that satisfies us? Is it just having a few moments to dance like we just have in the last two minutes? to dance around topics, or do we seek to create meaning in our lives, to, to proceed to build something in our lives? And if so, how can you do that if you're constantly dancing? Well, I'm just sitting here thinking of dancing, to be honest with you. I mean, just to give you an idea, as you were talking about that, I was like, okay, so really, what does it mean to be in the dance? Because to be in the dance, you have to be focused on the dance in and of itself, or bottom line is you're going to fall. You're not going to be able to continue that either. So it all comes back to the same essential quality. What are we connected to? And this is why the greater search has always been out there. The greater search of who am I? Why am I here? What is my life purpose? Because until we can really allow ourselves the gift of connecting with that, we become the goldfish. Absolutely. And so you just brought up one of the major themes that cer certainly surrounds our work, and we invite you to consider it for your life. 
that when we bring in the greater context, the spiritual context to why are we here and what are we doing, we begin to find a different source of meaning, a different source of peace and a different motivation for being alive. Because our connection, you know, I go back to what you opened the show with, Sri, which was if you look at the clouds, you become a daydreamer. But if you're connected to the clouds, you become a spiritual expansion. You become a seeker. Exactly. Yeah. So there's two different, uh, the same outward behavior could create two different experiences. And it allows your attention to become expanded because you jump outside of the linear network. You know, that's one of the things about these linear networks. I've got to, you know, and I love, I'm listening to all these birds singing in the background. Shri and I are, of course, sitting here in beautiful Antigua, Guatemala. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. I'm watching two amazing birds right now sitting on this banana tree. And I had to share that with you because what was my attention calling? And I, I'm watching these birds and I'm thinking to myself, how many of us forget the beauty of the gifts that are in front of us right now because we're too busy connecting linearly through our technology. Yeah, yeah. So the piece that uh, I, w I want to kind of drop into that beautiful pond of your own consciousness. Well, I'm sitting here really enjoying watching yeah, yeah, these yeah. birds, I got to tell you. <laughs> is nothing is good, nothing is bad. Mm -hmm. Things just are. And we have experiences. Now, you know, I've got to tell you, people are yelling at you right now, uh, Shree. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the, to the perennial debate. I know, but they're yelling uh, at you. I, I'm just going to say, from my point of view, from uh, the perspective of the one who has the mic, is that all experiences, all points of view, offer something to the collective. And so here we are in our Twitterverse, Facebook, uh, uh, bouncy world. And I want to ask you, in the bouncing, where are you headed? Because when we can uh, ha set a goal, when we can have a vision of what we want our life to be, of where we want to go, then maybe the bouncing, the twittering, the connections kind of coax us toward a direction. But if we're not holding a vision, if we don't have an intention, we're just bouncing. Now, you know, a lot of people would say, okay, I get that. But the reality is I'm using my Twitter, I'm using my Facebook, I'm using these things to have greater connections. And there is a valid point in this. We are not saying there is not a valid issue. What we are encouraging you to look at today and what we're gonna go really deep into is how do you put that vision together? How do you find out what you really are connected to? Because the powers that be, so to speak, those same people that are saying, hey, an RFID chip is for your protection, are the same people that are wanting your attention span to be short enough to be able to get the bullet points in for you to formulate and wrap around. And I en encourage you, if you haven't listened to our Group Think show, go back and listen to that one too, because these all string together. When we come back after our break, Shri, I wanna dive into how do you know what you're connected to? How can you stay connected to it? And how can you take that gift and make your life even more amazing, more bountiful, more financially successful? Not tomorrow, right now, today. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Namaste, beloved one. This is Kira Ra, and I am inviting you to take a journey of the soul in the land of the heart. Imagine your life free from chaos and filled with creative clarity. Imagine waking up each day in your private lakefront casita, greeted by brilliant sun, flowers, and birds. It is here that you will effortlessly resurrect your divine blueprint in pristine energy. Yes, I am inviting you to join us for a personal resurrection vacation retreat at beautiful Lake Adatman, Guatemala. Here, you can rejuvenate your life as you indulge in Tosa Spa cuisine, private healing sessions, yoga, tai chi, meditation, and loving support. Imagine enjoying pure air, zero noise pollution, and endless stars in this ascended nirvana. The time is now to claim your true joy. Learn more by visiting shriandkira.com and just click on the Resurrection Vacation Treat page. Tosa La Laguna, healing lives, healing hearts. We welcome you home. Welcome back. We're glad you're with us. And, you know, we're exploring this uh, 
eight second attention span. And the that brings, goldfish <laughs> span. Gold. <laughs> Every time you say that, I just see this goldfish going boom, 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 boom. Exactly, exactly. And, and I have a question. If, if, if I can be happy having an eight second attention span, why do I sleep so much? I don't know. What's what is with that this about? eight hours sleep I have no, I, you know what, Shree, that's another show too, isn't it? I want it? my <laughs> micro naps to be about the same as the attention. I hear you. <laughs> so, you know, we've been exploring a little bit about uh, the Twitter verses where we're kind of, I, I just like the phrase Twitter. I know you do. I can tell because you kind of giggle when you say it and you get that cute little look in your eyes. And uh, uh, this whole uh, instant messenger world that has been uh, cultivated by our technology. And the piece that we're wanting to uh, consider, we're wanting to explore is are we training human beings to have shorter and shorter attention spans or are we actually learning to process more connections more efficiently? because there is a possibility that this is actually teaching us to multitask. Well, you know, this is a little bit of both. And, you know, one of the things, we did a show, oh goodness, you know, you guys know me in linear time, don't ever trust me on this, but we did a show a few months back, and we referred you to go go watch, and if you haven't watched it in a while, go back and rewatch the documentary called uh, The Transcendent, Transcendental Man? Transcendental Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, the Kurzweil. Uh, and the Kurzweil documentary. And the reason I'm saying that is because Kurzweil, you know, much like many scientists who never realize that maybe there's a not so benevolent reason somebody would want your technology, um, Kurzweil believes that we just all need to have computers embedded in our brains, that in order for the human race to continue, we must become literally one with technology. We won't be able to keep up with the rapid processing of information. And the reason I'm bringing this up is at that point, we are no longer a human race. We become a techno-human race. Yeah, we're a hybrid and at that we point. We are. We become our own hybrid. And I guess the question is, is do we want that? Is that, what, is that what we want? You know, we are evolving. We are growing. We are expanding. However, when our essence, when our absolute essential humanity is put on the chopping block for, for debate, then, then we start recognizing that is this attention span a well-crafted way to get us to accept a techno-human existence? Yeah, and, and this, this uh, uh, world that we're living in, I think that each of us has the opportunity to champion our own experience. Mm -hmm, that is sure. to say, wild and wonderful. It's a beautiful world. What pieces of that cosmic jungle out there do I want to experience? Right. And how does this benefit me? And that leads us to the most boring and important part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I want to rephrase that, Stree. I think it leads us to one of the more illuminating and powerful parts of the show based upon your ability to say yes to going forward. Well, I use that word with a tongue in cheek because when we pause for a moment and get serious, oftentimes people go, oh, wait a minute. I'm losing my eight second thing here. You know what, guys? Ignore Shri. <laughs> I, I want you right now to know that I, you I are need ready you, for this. I need you for 30 seconds. Oh, we got you. We 30 got seconds. you. 30 seconds. Here we go. What is really important to you? You know, there's, there's the million dollar question. What is truly important to you? You know what, Shri? You said that in less than eight seconds. You did I good. know, but the response <laughs> is going to take you longer. You know it. And I invite each and every one of you to say, all right, this sounds both um, uh, practical and also maybe a little serious. Yeah. Why not take a pad of paper and you write at the top of the paper, What's truly important to me is... Now, i got to interrupt. you got to do this longhand, guys. Don't get on your computer. No, this is not a tweet. Right? No, this is... You can be on your computer listening to us right now, but I want you to pull out that pad of paper, pull out the pen. There is an actual neurological function. There is a, there is a connection between your hand, a writing instrument, and a piece of paper that will pull out the deeper response to this question. And you know, Shri, how many times have you and I asked people this question and the response is a sincere... I have no idea. A lot of people don't know. And if you don't begin by asking, and when I say ask, what I mean is write it on the, what is truly important to me is mm -hmm. on the top of the paper, and you just start doodling. You let your inner wisdom co uh, come up with 101 different answers. And don't couch them with, with qualifications. And don't judge yourself exactly. because there's going to be silly stuff and good stuff. Yep. I mean, what's really important to you? And you know what? Don't judge yourself either. For some of you, like I'm hearing, some of you are immediately going money. Okay, fine. Let it come back. 
out. Don't judge it. Yep, put What's it down really there. important to you? Let it flush out. But you've got to do it, and you have to do it longhand. This is do it longhand. longhand. It's a whole body experience. You're more than just your ears, your mind, your fingers. You are a whole person. Indeed. And so by writing longhand, you're engaging all parts of you. So we, we, we get this list of things, and then after you've written and feel that you're complete with the writing, you go back and look at it and put a big asterisk, put a star, circle it, highlight you know three or four of the, of the, the juicy ones. What's truly important to me is, yep. and then look at it. Can you align with it? Can you accept it? And do you really want it? Now, you know, Shri, I'm whew, not losing my breath, but feeling people holding their breath. So everybody, I want you to take a breath on that one. And here's why. Because what you might discover is that what's really important to you might be 100% in conflict with the way you live your life. Uh -huh. And you might discover that it's 100% in harmony with the way your life. But the key is if you don't do it, you'll never know. The idea is for you to be empowered, for exactly. you to take charge. Exactly. So if, if you get this list of, of the top three things that are important to you, the next question I want to ask you is, how much time do you spend or invest in those top three? I hope it's more than that eight seconds. You know, and take a look. Yes. How much time are you really investing in those three uh, meaningful priorities? Yeah, and that's a really important thing because the reality is, you know, a lot of people that I know spend an enormous amount of time on their blogging sites, on their Facebook sites. And, you know, with all due respect, I have experienced many, many blogging sites that are nothing more than gossip sites. Now, it might not look like gossip. However, the reality is, and I, and I want to flip it back because, you know, this show was all about, you know, gossip, Facebook, Twitter. What are we really connected to? Do you still get a charge? And I'm, and I'm asking this with all sincerity, my angels. Do you still get a charge in collecting information that's filled with drama about others, about our planet, about politics, about the world? Do you still get a charge? Because the greater that charge, the more disconnected you are from your own passionate path. And when you discover your passionate path, the amount of wealth, the amount of financial resources, the amount of people, the amount of serendipitous connections that come your way are so extraordinary, but they cannot show up if you're addicted to the gossip train. And so who's in charge of you? Exactly. See, that's it, Shri. That's you the are. Essence. You are. And so this is But the, are you? Well, here's the <laughs> thing. The moment you say, okay, Shri and Kira, I'm gonna I'm gonna try you out. I'm gonna pause for a moment. I'm oh, gonna, please do thank you. Know, you know, I'm gonna reflect on what's important yeah, to me. And I'm gonna look yeah. at how much time am I really investing in it. Because here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with using your thumbs to instant message no, and be connected. No, it's a kick. It's a total amount of fun. However, are you living a life of reaction? Are you just coping? Are you a responder? Or are you living a life of intention? Are you actually taking action to manifest your dreams? Action versus reaction. Well, that's in a nutshell, isn't it, Shree? What are you connected to? Are you connected to being the constant reactor, which to be honest with you, no one is more unhappy than the constant reactor, or are you able to take action in your life? You know, the key is you are that powerful. We are that powerful. Every single being on the planet, you have inside of you everything you need. And I, and I just, I can't stress it enough. Go to SriAndKira.com, get into our classroom there. You'll see it right on any of our pages. You'll see a button that'll take you to the Self Ascension Classroom. Take the Ascended Sanity program. Because unless you understand ascended sanity, you are trapped in the illusion. You are trapped in the gossip. You are trapped in the Twitterverse. And there's a way that you can enjoy it without it controlling you. RFID chips, guys, we're going to be talking about them coming up in a, in, a, in a show. I'm telling you, this is closer to reality than it's ever been. And the reason I keep throwing it at you is what are you connected to and what do you want to be connected to? You know, our world out there, our society in many ways is like a giant game board. Indeed. I thought you were going to say Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it could be. You know, it, well, I'm it, thinking it, thumbs, you it, know, I mean, that's it's all a joystick. Giant, <laughs> giant game board, and whether you're interacting with the, uh, uh, the, the devices or whether you're interacting in other ways, there still are rules of the game. Oh, absolutely. And, and there's a flow and a river and an environment of, of the societies and the cultures and, the, and all of the belief systems. It's a big game board. 
you will always get bounced around by it until you can get up on your tippy toes. And you know, here's the key. You got to take breaks from it. And, and this is one of the things, you know, we get a lot of mail, a lot of emails, a lot of people who write us and say, why did you guys move to Central America? You know, why did you move to a so-and-so, you know, third world country? Part of the reason is because people, what I experience living here, what I experience being in this extraordinary environment is deep personal connection. Yes, the computers are here. Yes, the Game Boys are here. Yes, like every other teenager in the world, they want their technology. Everybody's got a cell phone and they yet, can message. Yet the culture is still eyeball to eyeball, connection to connection, people to people. It's a very different pace and it, and it offers a deeper connection to the soul of humanity. And I encourage you, you know, come visit us, come down here to this land of the heart, come spend some time and give yourself the gift of saying, you know what, I can do that. And if you can't do that in person, then just keep listening to the show and we'll bring it to you this way. This is our moment of truth. And I'm talking about humanity. We are at a moment of divine destiny. How we offer our attention affects our world and it affects our children's world. And more importantly, it affects their children's world. What we do right now matters. Are we really wanting to become a techno human species? Or are we willing to allow technology to remain where it should be? Allow it to be our servant rather than we are the servant of technology. Well, technology is one of those mixed blessings because it is a um, cerebral invention. Uh, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that, that's the thing that struck me about Transcendental Man uh, is that Kurzweil makes the uh, argument that technology is moving so rapidly the human brain can't keep up with it. And that we must, that we have no choice. And, and to which I say, so what? Technology is just a computer. And what's happening is you now have us becoming a slave to technology rather than technology being the servant of mankind. Well, I, you know, I just have to share, and I want you guys, this is certainly just a, a perspective, but I, I want you to just consider for a moment that sometimes, and, and Kurzweil is certainly brilliant, you can be so brilliant you're naive to your creation. That, that uh, you know, while you believe that what you're creating will help humanity, there is always, we live in the world of light and dark, there is always the other side of that that finds a way to enslave humanity through a perceived, uh, you know, for example, I, I'm going to take it right now to TSA. How many of you have traveled lately, right? You know, the reality is, is that all of that screening at the airport is for your safety. And so people give up their liberties, give up their freedom, allow themselves to be groped and allow themselves to go through humiliating experiences because they perceive themselves to be safe. That's giving up your essential humanity. And it starts softly and it feels like it's good. And then you're like that frog in the pot. You're just sitting there happy and content going, oh, this water's nice and yummy and wait a minute, that's getting hot and wait a minute, oh my God, I'm boiling. Ooh. Well, had, had, <laughs> somebody had to say it, so I'll say it. Are so, we the frog in the pot or are we these so, amazing, so, co-creative, uh, beautiful beings? Absolutely. And, you know, the frog in the pot uh, fails to realize that he's, he's in a death machine. Right. And, and so Until he's you, dead. I want, to bring you, I want to bring you back to the concept of the game board. So this, this little TN, TSA analogy, and along with many other examples, are all aspects of the game board. And this is all, and this includes the Facebook and the I am uh, instant messenger universe. Until you can stand on your tiptoes, which what we're calling uh, living a, an ascended life, until you can go to 10,000 feet, so to speak, and look at the world, look at the experience, and ask the deeper questions. What am I really connected to? Am I addicted to adrenaline or am I having connections? Am I addicted to how fast I can respond and, and I want a bell or a whistle or an acknowledgement or am I achieving my vision? Ooh, whew. And when we oh, begin Shree, big one. to look with that level of responsibility, we can create a beautiful life while dancing on the game board. I love it. And we're not playing with the Game Boy. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, you can become a pawn. Indeed. And you know, it brings us to that essential culminating recognition. 
Only you can lift yourself through this process. And you know what? You're listening to this show right now, which means you're already there. You're already doing it. Beloved ones, take the measures. Pull out that pen and paper. Write it down. Listen to this show. Listen to the rest of our shows. Go to SriAndKira.com. Read the powerful messages coming from the archangelic realm. Go to our official Shri and Kira YouTube channel. Get your friends involved. It's time. If you want a revolution, let it begin with your heart. Let us have a revolution of the heart and let us move forward as humans. What is truly important to you? Mm. Let's take a breath and trust that your heart does know the way and it's beyond the compulsive twittering of your thumbs and the instant measure <laughs> uh, <laughs> messaging. <laughs> and beloved ones, until we have the blessing, and truly it is always a blessing to share this time with you again, may you bring that hand to your heart, take that thumb off your Twitterverse, and know that all is truly well. Thank you for joining us today for 2012 Higher Love. Remember that you can find out more about Sri and Kira by going to sriandkira.com. That's S-R-I-A-N-D-K-I-R-A dot com.